Hi, I'm Stacey T, and thank you for watching Making It, Artists and Stories. Today I'm here with Ryan Christensen, who also goes by the name RC. Hi, Hi. how are you? Yeah, I'm doing fine. How about you? I'm good, thanks. Good. First, why don't we start with telling us where RC came from? Yeah, RC, well, it's, uh, it's a play on my initials, okay. letters R and C. wanted something unique and something that, uh, you know, nobody else is using, and RC. There, there you goes. go. Yeah. Nice catchphrase. All right, so more importantly, what is it you make? What is it you do? So I'm a street artist. Oh. Um, yeah, it's, it's a very unique, you know, uh, career that, that I'm doing, and I'm um, just traveling, and I'm um, making public art um, in some of the larger cities in the country. Wow, so, okay. Yeah. So I know that you've been an artist for over a decade, yep. and you've kind of turned it into a business over the past five to six years. When you first started with your painting, first, let's go back. What do you paint with? Because you're not your average, you know, painter. Yeah, 100% spray paint. Wow. So everybody's so surprised to see that. Yeah. Oh my God, he's spray paint. He's using spray paint. How's he doing that in spray paint? Yep. Um, yeah. Well, I did. I went on your website to to look, and I was so surprised that I'm I'm looking at all your pictures, and I'm like, they are all spray paint, and I'm like, he's got to use a brush at some point. Yeah. Nope, all yeah. spray paint, huh? Yeah. yeah. I mean, when I'm doing my public work. Uh, the, these pieces, they're, they're pretty large. The smallest that I'll go with spray paint is 8 by 12 feet. I'll go larger and larger from that, just machine lifts and whatnot. Wow. Uh, spray paint is the way to go when you want to go large scale. Like yeah, that, I bet. You know? I bet. You must go through a lot. I go through a ton. Now, do you have ton. a specific type you use? No, I, I work with a, a great um, brand out of Germany, actually, okay. so I have it all imported. And, awesome. Um, I'm just going through um, thousands of cans, literally, each year. Yeah. Yeah. So, wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. When you started to turn it into a business like what was that moment when did you say you know what I'm having a lot of fun but I might have something yeah. here yeah well I, I started off as a graffiti artist I was having a good old time just enjoying myself painting for myself um, painting with my buddies you yeah know? and uh, one job would come in another job would come in and I start to kind of see that domino effect you know each job that I would do and because I'm doing this large scale yeah um, it's usually done outdoors it's usually done in the public so people, people would see noticed, it yeah so I start getting calls coming in and uh, and I started saying to myself, hmm, you know, maybe I, maybe I couldn't make a living doing yeah. this. Wow. So I, I, I took the risk and um, started to really focus on marketing myself and marketing wow. my name. And, you know, um, after, you know, several years, I yeah. started kind of get, getting the ball rolling there. That's great. Yeah. That's great. And you went, to, you went to college, though. I did go to college. Yeah. yeah. And did you go to college for art? <laughs> <laughs> it's the most common question I get. And the answer is no, I did no, not. Huh? No, I went to college for horticulture. I thought I would take over the lawn care business that my family owns. And it just didn't go as planned. No. The, the art really, uh, really started to develop. And um, yeah, the rest is history. So. There you go. Gotten some pretty big, exciting news coming up. Started and you're doing murals and you're doing buildings. And even here at WPAA, there is a beautiful mural on the side that you yourself have done. So what's the next big thing that is very exciting that we just learned about you? I will be starting to work on a collaborative body of work with a Disney company. That's so amazing. I'm excited about that. Um, I'm working specifically with Collector's Editions, who is their fine art distribution. We'll be working with them to produce a body of, of Disney work that yeah. everybody will enjoy, and um, it'll have my RC spin on it. That's so. great. That's great. And you're able to do that here in your hometown. I'm able to do it you right here. You don't have to go anywhere else. No, no. I'm, I'm, I'm working on all of my canvases, and, and I'm sending them out, and they'll be, you know, producing them and getting That's them out to the, uh, to the fans. So. That's great. And you don't foresee you ever becoming an L.A. guy or wanting to move out there? Or... I travel there enough, but Wallingford is my home. So oh, that's, that's my great. Home. That's yeah. great. So you keep it local. Yes. That's awesome. Yeah. You obviously are your own boss because, you know, this is your business. And, and I'm sure you've in the past had worked for people before. What do you think is the best part of being able to be your own boss and not oh. have to answer to someone else? I just, I don't have that stress factor, you know. And I, I get to make my own hours and just uh, be able to, you know, to develop my work on my own time. Yeah. And I do have to, you know, uh, follow, you know, deadlines and whatnot. And, you know, I, and I am working with a lot of clients, so I have a lot of bosses in a sense, yeah. you know, and a lot of... Uh, <laughs> boards that I have to propose things to yeah. and whatnot. But um but I love it because it's just it's it's very, very carefree and I you know, I'm just stressed you know, don't have to worry about, you know, much. So yeah. um 
and plus I get to spend time with my family. Absolutely. Uh, which is really nice. That's the pr absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. What's your favorite piece you've done? Like, out of all the ones you've done, would any one stick out in particular? One sticks out. Um, it was a larger piece that I did in, in it was actually in Wyoming. So wow. kind of out in the middle of nowhere, but I, I did a portrait of my, um, at the time, four-year-old son, Sean. And so I have this massive portrait of him on this wall in Wyoming. It's like 30 feet by 30 feet. Wow. And um, he's got a cowboy hat on, so it's really fitting with the, you know, with the location and whatnot. Really? I had him pose for it, um, you know, here in, here in Connecticut, here in yeah. Wallingford. And um, when I went out there, I, I did this portrait. And uh, so that's, it's fitting because it kind of hits home for you know for me I'm yeah. out there but I'm you know and how old is he now kids. so he's gonna be six and does he has he seen it I'm assuming yeah. he must get such a kick out of it knowing yeah, that it's him it. on this big building yeah. absolutely yeah. Yeah. I want to get him out there so he can see it in person yeah it's so yeah. crazy to come around the corner and see that so that's one that really sticks out for me yeah um, I, I, I do a lot of a lot of pieces and because it's spray paint they, they, they come together so quickly that sometimes it's hard to like pinpoint you know ones yeah. that really stick out but that one's a big one for me now, have you ever seen any of your pieces covered up or or um, taken down, like a building that maybe had gotten knocked down or? I mean, yeah, I, well, in, in my graffiti years, um, you know, you would see, you know, graffiti is always yeah. changing. And so a lot of my works would, would come and go and other people would paint over it and whatnot. And now that I'm into these public art years, in a sense, um, a lot of these pieces, they're actually, um, they're, they're staying. And I'm able to return to these cities and, 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 and revisit them. them. Yeah, so I enjoy seeing that. Yeah, that's great. Um, yeah, so. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, so out of all the ones you've done, the favorite one is, is one of your son. Yeah. And what What's the biggest one you've ever done? Uh, largest one, um, I would say the largest one is uh, is a piece that I had done in Chicago, Illinois, and uh, it was on the side of a, it was on the back of a grandstand building, so a huge entertainment area, and uh, this piece was it had to be over almost 200 feet long. It was, wow. it, was it was about 30 feet high. Um, and it, it took me about seven days to do this on a really? lift. Yeah, so I was. If you see the picture of it and hear that I did it in seven days, it's, you know, you're, oh my God, I can't believe that. But it's spray paint, so it works very quickly, and I was putting it in 12 hour days. So I was oh, that's just, what I was going to ask. Oh, how long of the day do you yeah, do? Yeah, I was, I was there, I was at night doing it. And um, so, I mean, it was seven days, but, it, you know, it, it took a lot of hours out of me. When you go back the next day, do you sometimes forget, like, where was I and, and what your plan was or where your vision was? Do you ever have trouble remembering your place? Absolutely not. No. The reason being is that I'm a perfectionist, I'm an OCD freak, so I have to make sure everything is all laid out and planned out. I need to know what I'm doing each day. Okay. You know, I need to identify what colors I'm working with and just, uh, just uh, everything has to, has to be in order for me. Okay. Um, that's just the way that I am as an artist. Okay. So that's how I, I find my success. Hey, whatever works, right? Exactly. And I hear you, you tour, so this is a big thing for you. Yes. So explain to me how the tour works. What is that about? So the tour is titled RC Live. Okay. And so I travel the nation, and I will travel internationally, and I work with a lot of festivals, a lot of large events, state okay. fairs, actually some private events and galas and whatnot, but anything where people um, are going to be you know, in, in, in a crowded area watching art come to life. And so I'll be doing my art almost, almost all the time. It's on an 8 by 12 foot wall okay and so i'll have these eight by 12 foot walls built um and there will be one built for every day that i'm performing oh okay so it's built specifically for your tour it's not something that's already pre-existing that you're using correct oh, i okay. give them the specs the the grounds crews will build these walls for me really and so i'll create these works of art daily um and uh some some of the bigger state fairs like new york state fair this year well, we're gonna have you for 12 days let's take these 12 walls and let's just put them all together and make a giant wall wow. out of it and let's do a huge collage like that'll be really awesome it'll yeah. be epic for the people that are coming in I'm, I'm noticing that that i'm starting to slowly you know um diversify what i'm doing in a, in a sense um but for the most part you know i'll be working with the eight by 12 foot walls each day creating a piece that will take me on average six to eight hours to okay do. So it's like a full day's work. It's a full day's work. People will see the pieces and they'll say, like, how long did that take you? That couldn't have taken you. You know, you, you started this morning. Like, they don't understand, yeah. but it's spray paint. Um, and the nice thing about it is uh, I'll do, you know, however many murals during a week at a state fair, okay. and these will all get auctioned off in the end. That's what I was going to ask. What happens to them at that wall that's built for you to paint on? What happens to it after? Yep, yep. yep. So they'll put it up into an auction, and you'll have all these fairgoers that'll see it coming to life throughout the week, and they'll, they'll bid on them. That's great. So they get to watch you do it, and then they get to take they it home. They have an opportunity. That's awesome. Yeah, exactly. That's and great. The fairs love it because they'll be able to get a return on their investment. Yep. They'll get the, the rest revenue to come back in and um, and I'm providing entertainment yeah. so in a sense I'm creating art and I'm providing entertainment so RC Live really took off 
Um, and I, I started it in 2015, so. Oh, so it's yeah, only been so a couple years, yeah. but it's, and look it's where you're going now. it's like wildfire. Yeah. I've toured to Canada, Australia, out to Europe, so I've, I've just been doing a lot of international work. Wow, now yeah. you, you have a son, do you have, a, in your family, do you take your family with you, or do I, you kind of? I actually have two sons. Oh, wow. And I wish I could take them with me, but they're young, you know, and five and three at the moment. It's and hard, uh, yeah. it's very difficult. So FaceTime comes into play yes. a lot. Yeah, I mean, when I was in Australia, I was there for the month. So okay. I was working with uh, the Royal Easter Show in Sydney, and um, and then I was doing other projects. And I was just, I would be calling them, uh, you know, early, early morning, and it would be nighttime yeah. here. And so I just, I work around it. Yeah. I imagine that when they are older, I'll hopefully be able to, to, to get them out here and there yeah. to some of these places. Do you see any art in there, in I their blood? Do you see them I, playing around at all? Sean, my oldest, he is quite the artist. Really? So I am so excited. Connor is my youngest and he is more athletic. So, okay. um, but Sean really, he, he, he's been showing, he's been showing it, you know, ever since really? he was like two years old. Oh, so you're like, like oh yeah. Um, <laughs> every day, every day he really? wants to do art. And so I, I'm obviously I'm trying to feed it as much yeah, as possible. Yeah. And, you know, I want him to be an artist too. Yeah, but, of you course. Know, but, you know. Kind of like your father with the horticulture degree and going to the business and now, you yeah, know, hey. Yeah, so, but I don't want to push him too hard. I no. want him to really, you know, no. enjoy and uh, try to develop, you know, what he feels is most comfortable with yeah, his styles and stuff. Yeah, so. Well, who was your muse? Who was your inspiration when you were growing up? What, what got you into I don't come from a family of artists, per se. I was very, very intrigued by the graffiti scenes okay. um, going on. As stereotyped as they are, um, they provide a lot of motivation for me to produce artwork yeah. in, a, in a positive way. So I was very, very inspired by the graffiti scenes. Kinetic has an amazing graffiti scene, an amazing culture of graffiti artists that are working, doing these elaborate works of art really? throughout, the, throughout the cities. They're being done in a positive way. Yeah. A lot of this graffiti work is actually more in demand now, you know, with the yeah. youth and, yeah. and with the public and whatnot. So I was really intrigued by all that. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, you're a graduate of Sheehan High School here in town. I am. Hopefully, they'll watch this, and maybe someone will contact you to do a little piece there at the school. That, that would be pretty amazing. I wonder if my art teachers remember me. There you go. I was, so, go. Yeah, I was really quiet in, yeah. in Sheehan, and, um, you know, so everybody, I think towards my latter years in, in Sheehan, I, I think a lot of people kind of knew me as that artsy kind yeah. of kid. You know, he was into graffiti and stuff like that, but I was quiet, and so, you know, I didn't yeah. talk to a lot of people. I would be interested to see, you know, where, where, how people... Yeah, RC live all of a sudden, you know, yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So what's next for you? I mean, can you top Disney? I mean, what, what could happen <laughs> Disney now? Is, uh, Disney's definitely was on the bucket list for a long time, yeah. and it, I, I worked my butt off to get to get here. And um, so I'm, I'm I'm in for the ride. I'm building the 2018 season right now with a touring, um, so I'm going to be traveling a lot. Okay. And, um, so a lot is under works, you know, in the works for that. Um, so I, I I don't know. I mean, I, you, you just I you know five years ago I, I never thought. You know, be I would here. be where I am. Yeah, so I just I don't know what's to come. Um, I imagine your tour is going to take on a whole new life now. Once once Disney, you know, does their thing and and you become known for that. Right. You know, your tour is probably going to change, and you're probably going to be in a lot more demand. Yes. And <laughs> and your tours may be longer or yeah. or bigger and better and. That's just yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah, I would hope so. I mean, I just the the important thing is that I just um I want to make people happy with my art and yeah. um. It's it just, it's a great feeling to, to hear, oh, you know, we saw this RC piece in yeah. this city, and oh, we have a piece of yours in our, in our home. We've acquired one of your live event murals. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just great to be able to kind of give back to these communities in a sense. Um, now working with Disney, that'll hopefully be able to broaden, you know, that Absolutely. outreach. Yeah. And, um, and make it more affordable and make it easier to accommodate. I mean, the, the works I'm going to be doing with Disney are going to be smaller pieces than, than what I'm normally doing yeah. on tour. Yeah. So these pieces are going to be able to fit in your living room, you know. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Is there a particular city in general that, that you want to do, like your dream city of something you want to paint? I've worked in a lot of cities. Um, I love New York City. I love L.A. It's funny because I worked in Wyoming out of all states last year um, the most. Really? And, and I did one one city. It was Rock Springs, Wyoming. And that's where I actually did the mural, Sean. And th the following year, I got calls back from six different towns. Wow. And, um, you know, Wyoming is a, it's, it's the least populated state in the country. Uh, they don't have a lot of public art. And so they caught wind of me, and they saw the stuff, the stuff that I, you know, I'd been doing, and because um, I had also done work for Wyoming's Big Show for, okay. for their event, and um, and and in 2017 I produced six 
large scale murals in in this state alone and um so it it, it kind of hits home for me yeah. you know i i, I always love going back yeah. there um, it's funny you say the least our art state and and here they are calling on you to do these mm -hmm. massive pieces it's like i guess the go big go or you know go home i, w I was doing pieces in towns that had n had no murals at all really? that i was literally doing their first murals uh, and some of these towns, they have less than 2,000 people wow. living. What would make them towns. call on you? That's uh, that'd be interesting to learn what prompted them. Yeah, well, I think it was just the, like the domino effect. They they caught wind. They they see you know some of the pieces that I'm doing in the hair, and and then you know they just they talk amongst each other, yeah. and you know so. And yeah. hopefully that broadens everybody else's artistic abilities in the area that you're doing you know you're bringing it there and maybe right. you know I think a lot of a lot of artists they um, they may be you know soft-spoken and they may you know they may feel like oh like you know I have to do what you know what what, what people assume is right in the in the industry and that's going into the gallery world and doing yeah. the small-scale works and the canvases and you hear the term struggling artists and whatnot mm -hmm. um, but I'm trying to kind of spice things up and change people's perspectives on art. And doing this large-scale public art, people are seeing it. It's it, it's known as the open-air gallery. You can walk outside and see these pieces. And I think it's, in a sense, it's um, it's it's making people feel a little more comfortable and, and yeah. giving people a little more confidence. The to stigma take. of tagging and, and graffiti, yeah. you know, no yeah. longer. Yeah, absolutely. You see a lot of these artists, they feel a little more confident now taking their taking their art and trying to, to do it on a larger scale or trying to put it out in, you know, yeah. The open. You had mentioned before, um, which I found very interesting because I didn't know, uh, what is it called? An art call? Well, I apply for a lot of art calls throughout the country. Um, public art is, uh, is in demand right now um, in the U.S. and beyond. And um, a lot of these cities, they have a lot of, a lot of funding for, for art, for murals. Um, okay. Philadelphia is a huge city for that. Yeah. I mean, they have hundreds and hundreds of murals. They actually have it worked into their law now where uh, for every, like, building that is constructed in the city or state funding or whatever, one mm -hmm. percent has to go towards public art. Really? Yeah. So, That's great. So they're getting murals like crazy. Yeah. Um, but I'm always, uh, you know, during the winter months, my wife and I were always looking for different artist calls and I'll be applying and, you know, trying to add to my, my summer touring. Mm -hmm. So I'll be going to a lot of these cities to be performing for RC Live at these state fairs and festivals, and then I'll be able to work in some of these projects that I may be awarded through, you know, through, through okay. getting these submission yeah, processes. So doing, that's great. Well, I thank you for joining us, and I know I learned a lot. I like the artist call and all those yeah, different absolutely. things, and it's amazing of what you can do with simply spray paint. It's like, it's just yeah. unbelievable. And maybe you'll be somebody's inspiration to try it as well. I hope so. I'm Stacey T, and I want to thank you all for tuning in and watching Making It Artisan Stories. And remember, when you shop small, you're supporting your dreams.